everyone and welcome back. This is Ginny from Polly's Paper Studio. You are watching day 13 of our 13 days of Halloween series. If you're just joining in, there are links in the description so you can catch up on the first 12 days. And since this is our last project, I just want to take a minute to express my very heartfelt appreciation for everyone who has joined me for this series. I am overwhelmed by the positive feedback, kind comments, likes, and subscribes that you all have been sharing with me. It means the world to me to know that our little community is together and we are celebrating this fun holiday by being creative. So first of all, thank you so much for that. This is going to be a special video today because at the end we are going to be making a very special announcement so make sure that you stay tuned through the whole video. For today's project we're making this instant photo frame shaker so stick with me and we'll make this together. So for this project I'm going to get back into that trick-or-treat collection from Echo Park. I really have loved it. I wish I had gotten into it sooner so that I could have made more projects out of it but I will be working with it today. And then I also have the ephemera cuts to add to the front of my project. I wanted to create a instant photo style frame shaker. Um, and I just was struggling with how to add the foam spacers to these very narrow sides and top. Then I figured I could just add it to a card front and use the whole card front as the shaker base. So I took my cardstock. I used a 110 pound cardstock and I cut it at three and a quarter by four and three eighths. Then I have this square die. This is from Sizzix. It's part of the nesting set. And I just very carefully taped this on with washi tape so that I would have that iconic thicker border at the bottom and then ran it through my die cutting machine so that I would get this instant photo frame effect. So I wanted to add it to something that had a nice finished edge. So I'm working also with this stitched rectangle from Cheeryland Designs. So that makes it nice to have a detail on the edge. I've got my cardstock for the background and I'm still working with that 110 pound cardstock, but I'm working with black instead because that will give me a nice finished border. And then I've cut a second piece of that rectangle stitching out of white. There's a reason for this and that is because I want to be able to layer on the shaker portion and know that I'm getting it exactly positioned in the middle where I want it. And then it also helps me to position the image that will be inside the shaker. So what I've done is I cut my pattern paper this, I believe, is from Pebbles. I could be wrong, but it's very nice checker pattern. Um, and I lined that up before I added my acrylic panel and just traced the inside of that square with a pencil. So now I know where my image should go. This is part of the journal card. Um, and I liked it because it's a nice big image, which um, it's going to fill that shaker portion really well. And I want to sort of keep it straight up and down because it's a tree. That makes sense. And have a little bit more at the top so that the full square will have a nice image showing. Now you can see when I position the next layer over, I'll have just that perfect amount of image showing in the cutout. I have already added my acrylic and I just used my Tombow adhesive to stick that down and set my heavy acrylic block on top so that it would have time to set up. I'm going to come in now and add my double-sided adhesive tape. This is the one that I picked up from Amazon. It's um, a little bit thicker so I'm only going to have to put in one row of that instead of the double layer like um, traditional foam adhesive. So I'm just going to first define that square section, making sure to press that against the previous row 
so that there won't be a gap in the adhesive where the sequins can come out. Do that all the way around. Then you've also got to put some around the border because this whole section has to pop up. I'm getting it fairly close to the edge. It seems to be easier just to go ahead and use your fingers to tear this instead of getting all that adhesive stuck in your scissors. Even with the um, Teflon scissors that are non-stick, it did seem to be a little bit of a struggle to get that out of there. So I'm just going to add an extra layer to support that center section because that will be um, a pretty big gap between the square and the edge. So now we have the full panel ready to add and this is all with the adhesive on the back and ready to secure to the front. Lining it up with the second rectangle die cut that we put in first. So what I want to do before I add anything else is to come in with my anti-static tool and just make sure that I don't have any sticky adhesive on the side where it's facing the inside of the shaker. Okay, I've just got my sequins here and I picked up this uh, from Amazon and there's a nice selection inside of colors that will work great for this Halloween project. So there's kind of a mix of silvers and I'm calling this one marshmallow and some silver. Make sure that you don't overload this because then it will just get all stuck in the corner. So here's white and then there's some that are sort of iridescent. I think that's really a nice combination. So I'm just going to flatten these out a little and spread them out so that they won't create a lump in the middle where all the sequins will get stuck. And then I'm going to remove the backing off of this foam tape. Now all I have to do is line up those die cut rectangles. And I know I've got this position exactly where I wanted it to be. and just press that into place so that there's a good contact and see that my shaker works perfectly, just how I wanted. Okay, the frame is next and because I cut the squares out of the same square die cut, I know that all I have to do is line that up and it will be just like the window is on the frame instead of the card base. There, now it looks like I have a shaker instant picture map. Okay, next I want to add this sweet little flower arrangement. It's very small and compact because I don't have a lot of room here on the side. And also I want to layer in a small gold die cut star. I'm overlapping the edge of the frame itself just so that it would have a little more interest. Then I've got one of the pieces from the die cut ephemera. I'm just gonna layer that cat here. It's part of a ticket shape and I decided to remove the bottom section so that it would fit better on this because I want to layer on a few more elements which is another one of these stars and the sentiment which also came out of the ephemera pack. And I picked this one because of the dark background. I thought it really popped off of those layers. So that is all for our instant photo frame shaker project, as well as our 13 days of Halloween series. Now for our special announcement, we will be giving this project away to one lucky winner. All you have to do to enter for your chance to win is leave a comment on this video. You do have to be a subscriber to Polly's Paper Studio YouTube channel to be eligible to win. I will draw a name and make sure that that person has left a comment on all 12 videos in the series and we will make a special video announcement on the 9th of October. This drawing is open to residents of the continental United States only. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you give me a thumbs up and if you're not already, I would love for you to subscribe. As always, I'm wishing you a happy and productive day, and I thank you so much for watching. Bye.